I bought my 125 before I had passed my CBT, and I bought my Z400 before I passed my Mod 2 and got my A2 license. Both times I bought my bike before I was legally allowed to ride it, and both times I honestly regretted it. Here's why I think you shouldn't buy your bike before you've passed your test. In the case of my 125, I really was going to buy a bike after my CBT, but the excitement just got away from me, I found a good deal on a CBF 125, and I heard that was a good bike, so I bought it. I didn't know anything about motorbikes at this stage, I didn't know which ones existed, or even really which brands made bikes. So I was just purely going off friends' recommendations on what might be a good first bike. I'm quite a short rider, I'm 5 foot tall, 151 centimetres, with a 28 inch inseam. I didn't really know that this would present much of a challenge when it came to riding bikes until I started learning on my CBT and realised that at least as a beginner, seat height was going to be a real issue. When I went to do my CBT I actually started on a YBR which is very similar in size and weight to the CBF125 and if I'd just waited a couple more weeks before buying that bike I would have noticed pretty much straight away that that wouldn't have been the bike for me. I did eventually learn how to ride my 125 quite well but I was never 100% comfortable on it like I am on my Z400. After I got more into bikes and I started talking to more people in the community, I came across so many bikes that would have been a much better fit for me. If I'd bought one of these 125s, I probably would have stayed on it for an extra year, put up a little bit more no claims and saved myself a bit of insurance money. Instead, after about 6 months I really wanted to get a new bike, and thought that the best way to do this would just be to go for my A2 license. If this is your first CBT and you've never ridden a bike before, maybe you're like me, you've never even been close to a bike before, there's almost no way that you're going to buy the right bike without trying it first. Even if you don't have physical limitations like mine, everyone's going to have a different opinion on what's comfortable for them and what's not. You might do your CBT on a naked bike like the YBR or the CBF, and you might decide you hate it and you want a sports bike instead. Or you might decide that you really like it and you're really comfortable on it, and you go out and buy the exact same bike that you took your CBT on. And in the very unlikely event that you take a CBT and decide actually I don't really like riding bikes, you haven't lost anything. I've mentioned in a previous video but I really struggled on my CBT and the whole time I had the added pressure of knowing that I'd already bought a bike, I probably wouldn't be able to sell it for what I bought it for, how much money I was going to lose, how much time I'd wasted, it was just a lot of stress that I didn't need at that particular moment. All of that could have been avoided if I'd just waited another week or two before buying that bike. So you might be wondering if I regretted buying my bike so much before I did my CBT, why did I do it again when I did my A2 license? And honestly, I'm wondering the same thing. I'd already booked onto a training course to do my A2 and I told them my height and they told me that they had a lowered Gladius 650 that I could use and I thought that would all be fine. A few weeks before my training started they asked me to come up to the training centre and have a little go on their bike to see how it would fit and it was decided after that that I couldn't take the training on the Gladius I had to buy my own bike. Honestly, I think with a bit of perseverance I could have used that Gladius but I didn't want to lose my deposit and I didn't want to lose the date that I'd already secured for my training so I went out and bought a Honda Rebel 500. And that brings me on to, I think, the biggest reason you shouldn't buy a bike before doing your test, and that's that you can't test ride it. For those of you who follow the channel, you'll know that I had nothing but problems with that Rebel, and luckily all the problems happened quite quickly after I bought it, so I managed to return it and get my money back. But without being able to test ride that bike, and if I'd bought it months in advance, all of those problems would have become apparent when it was way too late. Having a friend test ride the bike is kind of useful, they can tell you if anything feels immediately wrong, but at the end of the day, it's your bike, you're going to be the one riding it, they might be comfortable on it and you might not be. A huge learning point for me was to never buy a bike when you're under pressure, and never buy a bike that somebody else tells you you should buy. I pretty much thought that I had to ride cruisers because I was short, and that's just not the case, not even close. There are so many bikes out there, you can try a hundred bikes before you find one that works for you, but you will find one. I managed to get my money back on that Rebel, but if I hadn't, I ended up paying probably a thousand pound more than they are now, just because it was at the height of bike prices. The price of those bikes has come down so much since, I would have been really gutted if I would kept it. At this point, I had already passed my Mod 1, I already had a date booked in for my Mod 2, and I had to return the Rebel, so now I was down a bike. You can take what I said earlier about not buying a bike under pressure and magnify it by 10 because now there was additional pressure, I had a time limit on when I could pass my Mod 2 by, I already had a date booked in, I wanted to get it in as soon as possible, and I ended up buying this Z400 brand new, I really love it, but maybe that's not the choice I would have made if I wasn't under the same kind of pressure. There's definitely pros and cons to buying brand new, um, a pretty obvious con is that it's a lot more expensive. Even things like getting it serviced, to keep the warranty going, I pretty much have to get it serviced at an authorised Kawasaki dealer. That cost me so much more than just doing simple jobs myself like I did on my 125. My third and final reason you shouldn't buy a bike before passing your test is what happened to me, I failed my Mod 2 twice and I passed on the third time. I don't know if you can imagine how gutting it is to see your shiny new bike sitting on the drive and not being able to ride it, and then again when you fail the second time and finally you're able to ride it when you pass the third time. If you fail your test, it's kind of like what I was saying about the CBT, you have so much additional pressure about having already bought a bike. 
it just adds to that disappointment tenfold and it's not really what you need when you're already disappointed. I love this bike, I really do, but having bought it under pressure, it always leaves a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth. You always wonder, what if I had my license? Maybe I would have found something else. Maybe I would have test ridden something else and I would have liked it more. I almost definitely would have bought second hand instead of buying brand new. So those are my three big reasons you shouldn't buy a bike before passing your test. I know sometimes the excitement gets away from you, it happened to me three times and it's probably going to happen to me again when I go and do my full license. But really, follow your brain instead of your heart on this one and wait until you have your license before you buy your bike. But whether you buy your bike before or after you do your test, make sure you ride it safe and I'll see you in the next one.